Here is the full method that we used to build our online coaching business, Propane Fitness, to generate 10 to 15K per month. So this is what I'm gonna be covering. No hype, no secrets. I'm just gonna be fully transparent about the steps that we took to build Propane and we've documented it into a blueprint for you. So you might wanna take some notes on this video, but if you want the summary of the blueprint, just comment blueprint below and we'll send you the link. So the last couple of years has been pretty tough for many people, for many reasons, but it's accelerated an existing trend that we've seen, that people are prioritizing their health more than ever, and people are starting to recognize the value in online coaching. We've been coaching online since 2009, but we've never seen such an influx as we have now. And that's reflected in the market. You can see the size here of the virtual fitness market, very strong growth, massive market cap, and it's only gonna get bigger. So it's the best time to enter. Well, the best time would have been 10 years ago, but hopefully through this video, I wanna show you some of the mistakes that I wish that we'd avoided when we'd started. It would have massively accelerated our journey. So let's start with some proof in the pudding. Here's the obligatory Stripe photo. And if you don't know who we are, my name's Yusuf and this is my business partner, Johnny. We set up Propane in 2009 when we were working full-time in the financial sector and we were able to quit our jobs and go full-time with this. In between that time, I went and qualified as a doctor. Johnny is a qualified accountant and you'll be able to see how that influences our approach to this stuff. But you can find out more about that in this video. So also we've written over 500 articles between us, 400 podcast episodes, hundreds of thousands of listeners, social media following, we've been featured in men's health, men's fitness, elite FTS, all that stuff. I'm just saying that I don't really believe in the importance of those kind of accolades, but people ask and it helps us to show that we're not bullshitting you. So I'm telling you this because we completely fumbled our way through building propane fitness and We've tried various coaching models. We tried one-to-one, -one, we tried selling eBooks. Then we went into group coaching and member sites. But the key principle is that you are monetizing your expertise in some way. The big mistake we made when building Propane was actually that we were too nerdy in our content and we misjudged our niche. We spoke about stuff that only other personal trainers cared about. So writing articles about like leucine metabolism and in vitro effects of artificial sweeteners on pancreas beta cells. So a lot of people that ended up following us were other PTs and coaches. And through coaching them, sometimes we would get asked like, oh, your systems for coaching are so slick. Like, can you help me with my systems to coach my clients? So that's kind of how we ended up stumbling into the like business mentoring space, but it was very much demand driven. So currently we still do both. We, we coach fitness clients and we help certain PTs with growing their online stuff as well. So. You can see here, we still actively do the fitness coaching. Some people ask at this point, like, are you not worried that you're creating competitors by helping other trainers? Honestly, no, like the market is billions of people. So we're not worried about competition. If anything, it raises the standard of the industry as a whole. And we actually don't have the capacity to coach 2 billion clients. Um, they, they all actually inquired, but we, we said, no, no, we're, we're full at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's kind of transparency behind showing behind the scenes of what it is that we do. And I think it's important to do that because we can only teach what we've successfully done. And there's many things that we failed miserably at. Like we tried drop shipping, didn't work at all. We tried Forex trading. I personally lost about 25K doing that. So those are not things that we can teach. But what we do know, and we've done successfully for over a decade, is online coaching. That's an important and pretty reasonable litmus test to apply to any business guru. Like, are they teaching what they've actually done? Because there are some people who it's very clear that they haven't and it shows. So whenever you see kind of six figure, seven figure fit pro guru people, just look for proof in the pudding. That's my advice to you. So that's how it's come about. We've packaged our expertise in fitness and then later in the lessons that we've learned in this. And actually there's loads of parallels, like growing your business online in that you start out in fitness and you're looking for the fat burning pill and the magical training program. And then you realize like, oh, it's actually just about consistent progressive overload applied over time. And it's the same with business that there's people who will set up and big flashy Lamborghinis and crazy uh, 30K months and all that kind of stuff. And you know, you can blast the high ticket sales and have a big month, but that's not a sustainable business model. There's no longevity in that. Uh, my Lambo is actually in service at the minute, otherwise I was gonna record this video sat on the bonnet. Just kidding, I'm more of a, a Vauxhall Astra kind of guy. But 
Um, the point is that it's not an overnight success. We were not overnight seven figure fit pros. It's taken us at least a decade to get this stuff right. We started out literally doing the standard mistakes of just posting relentlessly on social media, basic website, PayPal account, promoting one-to-one -one clients. Hey, I'm looking for five people who want to lose fat, busy professionals, whatever. Um, and then over time, we've evolved into the systematic process that I'm gonna to cover today. Is it possible to compress that journey? And could we have done the same thing in less time? Absolutely, it's the same with training. You know, I, I always look back on my training and wish that from the age of 16, I just ate more food and just stuck to a single program. I would have been in far better shape than I am today. But this stuff is difficult. I'm not gonna pretend otherwise. Like if you want to really hit 100K a year in an online coaching business, it's gonna need to be your full-time focus at some point. So there's no quick fixes. If we find one, we'll obviously be the first to tell you. But the point is, if you can serve a particular need, then with the right systems, you can predictably make this work with the time and putting in the effort. So the first step is figuring out what is your freedom number. We have a calculator for that, but the point is to be able to match your offline income with your online income so that you can safely make the leap. And then that frees up a whole bunch of time. If you want to quit your full-time job and do online coaching, then you can sort of build the machine even further. What I would not recommend is what some people are motivational speakers tell you is just burn your bridges. And when your back's against the wall, you'll find a way to make it work. I think that's just kind of soundbite advice, but it'll force you to make funky decisions that aren't necessarily good long-term. The truth is you don't need to quit your job to get to stage one of matching your offline income. Five hours of directed work per week on the right things is gonna get you there. It took us a lot longer because we were just focusing on the wrong stuff for too long. We were too stubborn, we didn't have a blueprint. And what we were doing was focusing on manual churn. And when we switched to systems, that flipped the switch to go full-time very quickly. And it took our revenue from about 2K a month to 10K within four or five months. So how does this map onto you doing personal training full-time and how long would it take to replace that income with online coaching income. I think you can comfortably do this in a year. So let's say you're doing 35 hours per week, 25 to 35 pounds per hour in the PT sessions. You're generating about three and a half grand per month for 140 hours of work. If you want to match your income, let's say we get 35 online clients by the end of the year and you're charging hundred pounds a month, which is our recommended kind of mid ticket level. And I'll go into that in a moment. Plus, you hold on to your favorite 10 clients that you like to work with. Some people like to do that, it keeps them grounded. It's one of the kind of hidden downsides of being a full online fitness coach is that, you know, you're just on a laptop all day and you're a fitness professional and sometimes it's a bit isolating. So it's nice to work with some people in person if that's what you choose to do. But even just that switch, that's £4,900 per month in that example. But the cool part is the hourly rate. Those 35 online clients take far less time than the in-person ones. The hourly rate goes up, you've got better lifestyle, it's much more flexible, it's more money overall. So that alone is a massive lifestyle shift. You've got more time to travel, time to spend with family, and no one seems to be talking about this because three to 5K a month is not very sexy. Yes, 30K a month is flashy, but there's massive downsides when you start to scale your business. The bigger your business, the more complexity, the more your costs are, the more churn. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. So what do you need to get there? 35 people out of 2 billion. Do you think what you have to offer is valuable enough to find 35 people? The other massive benefit is the flexible schedule, the time freedom. You get to choose who you work with, which is very satisfying. One common complaint of PTs is that you will get some clients that come and see you in person, not really to get results, but just to offset any guilt because they, they're like, well, I've spent the hour with you now so I can go and eat whatever the hell I want. And if I don't get into good shape, that's your fault. You, 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 you get rid of those people with online coaching. You can also choose where you work. So either your living room or in Bali, if you want to, you can help thousands of people, not just hundreds because of the ripple effect that your content has. Your income doesn't stop when you go on holiday or your clients go on holiday, you've got much higher profit margins. You're not paying for kit or rent or travel, no more early mornings. 
And so for me, that ticks all the boxes of a fulfilling career. And I'm so glad that Johnny and I didn't go down the route of setting up a studio gym and doing offline PT all those years ago. So how do you do it? You've got to reverse engineer it. So you look at the end point and then you say, right, who am I gonna be working with? How much do I charge them? How do I get those people? How do I get them a result? And how do I keep them happy without exchanging my weekends and evenings for it? At that point, it's how do I scale beyond word of mouth? If you can answer those questions, you've got a viable online coaching business. Now, the market seems crowded because there's big names going after general population fat loss. And so all the kind of PTs on Instagram try and copy that. They don't get anywhere. And then you see that and you think, oh God, there's no way I could go up against that. Or the imposter syndrome kicks in and you go, well, I, I haven't got a PhD in biomechanics, so how am I supposed to compete with that too? Or on the other hand, you've got business gurus telling you that you need to niche down so hard and you can only ever work with people called Jane who are 33 and work in corporate finance in Slingsbury. I don't even know where Slingsbury is. Um, so the, there's all this stuff and it's hard to know how do you find a niche that works. The other thing as well is there's loads of comparison on Instagram particularly. Like everyone tries to make it look like they're doing really well on Instagram. And believe me, we've seen behind the scenes of many of these big influencers and they're not doing anywhere near as well as you might think. So what's the solution to the crowded market problem? Do you need a niche? Yes, but forget the person and focus on the problem that you're solving. Busy professionals in their 30s is not a niche. So in Johnny's corporate job, he was sat on a team with two guys who were both 30 year old busy professionals. One of them had a 280 kilo deadlift the other one was obese and had never set foot in a gym. There's no way you'd be able to sell the same fitness program to both of those guys. So focus on the problem that you're solving and not the demographic. Then the world is your oyster. Not for me, because I'm allergic to oysters, but this is the benefit of working online. That if you want to work with NFL athletes, but you live in Barnsley and you're trying to do that offline, then good luck. But you've suddenly got access to any keyword, any type of audience. And the easiest person to solve a problem for is your past self earlier on in their journey. And you can do that because you know exactly what they were going through. You can then deliver that in your messaging, in your marketing, and it gets that effect of, oh my God, this is exactly me. They've read my mind. And that's what you're after. There's also, it's the perfect solution to imposter syndrome because you know more about that person than anyone else. You're no longer fighting the war for attention and you're already a specialist in the problems that you've encountered and that you've solved. So here's some examples of this stuff in action. So Ryan started off online coaching, going after busy mums, wasn't getting any traction, probably because he's not a busy mum himself. So you're kind of starting on the back foot there. He was a recreational powerlifter, but he had some imposter syndrome thinking, well, I'm not world-class, so why would anyone listen to me? We encouraged him to go after that niche and go for beginner powerlifters because he is several chapters ahead of them. And now he's making a full-time living from it. They're more likely to hire Ryan than they are to hire some elite guy who's so much in the rarefied atmosphere that they've forgotten what it's like to be a beginner. Nate used to work in CrossFit gyms, started on online coaching with generic muscle gain and fat loss stuff, wasn't getting traction with that. But the part that he loved about coaching the CrossFit classes was jump rope, and he's amazing at it himself. You can have a look at his skills on Instagram. So he leaned into that. Now he is absolutely smashing it. And being a jump rope coach, you've got so much more of an edge than trying to do generic muscle gain and fat loss stuff. Francis got the system up and running for one niche, all the numbers were profitable, then duplicated that model and applied it to a second niche and was able to successfully scale that way. The next question is how much should you charge? So high and low priced coaching have their own relative problems around expectations and meeting them, refund risk and retention. And the typical advice people tell you is you need to up your price and charge your worth and charge more than £5,000 for a fat loss program. This is why we don't recommend doing that and don't recommend sales calls. We actually worked with a business coach years ago who recommended that we go down this route and we tried it for six months. It didn't sit well with us morally, but also he, this guy was bragging about having made a single mother remortgage her house so that she could afford his fat loss program. He was encouraging making people cry on the phone. 
Stop crying, Margaret. No, this isn't just any fat loss plan. You get a three-day meal plan as well. That's why you're still fat and I'm shredded, Margaret. Yes, I know it's a thousand times the cost, but this is the ultimate weight loss scam for transformation. No, I don't care that you've got mouths to feed. Sometimes you have to sacrifice to win. Your kids are eight and 11. They can buy their own food. You just don't want it enough. That's your problem. You've got a house, don't you? Ever heard of a remortgage? Do you know why God gave you two kidneys? So that you could sell one of them and sign up for my ultimate weight loss transformation. It just was not who we want to be. Let's run the numbers anyway. Let's assume that you're a psychopath. You don't mind making people cry on the phone. And the goal is 72K annual revenue because obviously gurus like to flex revenue numbers and not profit. So the unit price, let's say is a thousand pounds. You need 72 sales therefore to, to make that. And with a sales call to cold audiences, the conversion is typical in the industry about 15%, which means that you would need 480 calls, which I mean, that alone is pretty draining, but let's go with that. So the average cost per call with a 48K ad spend um, and that's, you know, that's actually pretty cheap. That assumes that you're very good with the ads would be a hundred pounds per call. So then after the ad spend and so on, your profit before tax is 24K. It's not a very good hourly rate. So the problem with it is that it ignores the reality of the market and the alternatives. Why would someone in their right mind pay 5,000 pounds for fat loss coaching when they can sign up with an app for five pounds a month? Even at £1,000 in that example, in-person coaching is so much cheaper. So it just ignores the basics of supply and demand. This model also absolutely requires a sales call to sell something of that price. And at that conversion rate, you're looking at 10 hours plus per sale that you make. For high ticket stuff, because there's no financial return on investment for that client, it's also very hard to over deliver. And so it necessitates like high contact coaching and lots of time. The other big problem, which I'll cover in a moment, is that growing the business this way actually worsens your coaching service overall. So you have that in place. It also produces a lot of anxiety because you get feast and famine and you always need new customers monthly because a high ticket model has a very high attrition rate, meaning that it's very rare to see consistent renewals and people will often fall off the wagon. The final thing is that it fails the you're looking trim test, which is, let's say you go out for dinner with a friend that you haven't seen in a couple of months and they go, oh, you're looking trim. And you go, oh yeah, thanks. I've been working with an online coach and they go, oh, sweet. How much is it? And you go, 5,000 pounds. Like, what? 5,000? You paid 5,000 pounds for that. Like it fails the basic common sense test. So we've tried it and we experienced all of those problems firsthand, but for those reasons, that's why we recommend mid-ticket coaching. So let's run the same example. You've got a 72K annual revenue target with a unit price this time of hundred pounds a month. Average retention time, six months. So the revenue per client is on average 600 pounds. And you can bump that up by delivering a better service and extending the average retention time. But let's go with this. So you need 120 sales to hit your 72K annual revenue target with a sales conversion of 5% typical in the industry. So the leads that you'd need is 2,400 and you can generate average cost per lead for three pounds without a sales call. So the way that we'd recommend structuring this is two-step pricing. So six to 12 week group coaching package for 100 to 300 pounds. And that rolls onto a recurring monthly program for around hundred pounds a month. That way you're building the best coaching possible in a systematic way. The benefits of structuring it this way are huge lifetime value. So one of my longest lasting clients has been with me for about nine years now. His lifetime value is over 11,000 pounds. Plus it generates great before and afters because people stay with you long enough to get good results. Plus it generates referrals, great hires. It's the kind of price point where each month someone sees their bank account and they don't look at it and go, oh, I need to cancel that. It's reasonable enough for them to work with you long-term. And people think in terms of the monthly cost, not the lifetime value. So as a business and profitability wise, you should be thinking, you should be looking at it in terms of lifetime value rather than trying to just maximize cash up front. Some more examples of this in action. Tom O'Hagan works with people in MMA and grappling sports. 
turned out he was charging a little bit too much for that kind of industry because typically people who do MMA need to have two gym memberships, the MMA gym and the gym gym. And so online coaching on top of that needs to be a little bit cheaper to account for the, the monthly cost. Dropped his price, he had a massive boost in retention, improved his profitability, and now he's got a scaled online group offer. Neil, same thing, he built his group offer up to 70 online clients and he's decided to just cap it there and stop scaling because that's provided a good lifestyle for him. So this is a flywheel. It is a wheel that takes momentum from the system to accelerate the whole system. And that's, that's as simple as I can get it. I looked at the Wikipedia page, but it's, uh, it wasn't so helpful. A mechanical device which uses the conservation of angular momentum to store rotational energy, kinetic energy proportional to the... A bit more of a mouthful, but hopefully you get the idea. Or if not, I'll explain how this applies to, to business. So a negative flywheel is something where if you were to grow that system, that applies drag to the business. So in the case of one-to-one -one coaching and sales call heavy business model, as you attempt to scale, you end up with more sales calls, less time for coaching, more clients coming on board, but they need more one-to-one -one help, but you've got less time available for sales calls and more clients leave or want a refund because you can't give them as good a service and the whole thing just gets worse. Whereas the mid-ticket group coaching model is a positive flywheel. So scaling it actually accelerates the whole process and helps you to grow your business. That's because as people sign up, it's the systems in your business that deliver the programming. And each time you deliver something, each time you build a resource, that becomes the definitive resource for that program. So your program gets better and more refined the more people that go through it. Also, from the marketing, each time you market to the same person in a specific niche, you get the feedback from that and that helps you to refine your marketing process and then that becomes more efficient as well, which drives up your profitability. So you can see how this works as a positive flywheel. So how do you actually get those clients? Well, the most common method that we see people try in the industry is the post and hope method. So constantly doing Instagram stories and swipe ups and lip syncing reels, pointing at words about protein and um, swipey carousels and all that stuff. Just busy work, basically. This is not a business model. This is not a lead generation system. Amazon didn't get to the size that it is because Jeff is really good at TikTok. So the other problem with that is that when you're posting on these platforms, show me the post that made that sale. You often can't. Maybe none of it worked. Maybe some of it worked, but you don't know. We have very sophisticated sales tracking systems in place at this point, And I can tell you with certainty that Instagram is the second least profitable platform out of everything that we do. Number one being ads, followed by email, followed by YouTube, then Twitter, then uh, and podcast, followed by like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Like it's, it's really low on the hierarchy, but people spend the most time on it because it looks like everyone's doing really well on there. The second way that most online coaches try and get clients is cold DMs to book a sales call. And for the fitness coaches that we work with, we've often got them better results by taking the sales call out of their process. Consumers are not used to buying on the phone anymore. It's not 1990, you don't need to call Amazon to see if they've got any CDs and mini discs in stock anymore. So it's a bit of a jarring experience for people. And so have a look at this for more on why we don't recommend sales calls. Also to address the elephant in the room, we do offer calls for the business program but they're not sales calls. We're not gonna be digging into your pain points or trying to make you cry on the phone or anything like that. It's really, it's for both of us to figure out if this is something that you could benefit from or not. Um, with business, there's a lot more moving parts. It's not just about progressive overload and calories. So we can't help everyone and we have to figure out, is this something that you would be a good fit for? Where sales calls do come in useful in a business is seeing who you can't help. Most people have the opposite problem. The other big mistake that PTs make is they try and use the same methods to get clients offline and transpose that into online. It doesn't work, it's a different game. So if you're walking around a gym with personal trainer on your back and big biceps, you're already an authority in a pool of people who are already joined a gym and are at the gym. So it's a different ballpark. Instead, we recommend this, which is a 14 day sales system. We've done this because we analyzed all of our opt-ins, so 30,000 people going through our opt-ins across different channels, 
And we found that the average time it takes from someone to go from cold opt-in to buying something was 14.5 days. That also matches why lots of big software companies have 14 day trials as well. So what should you include in that 14 days? It's front loading all of your best content so that that customer journey is standardized. And what you do in that content is you work through objections and specific limiting beliefs that that person might have about being able to sign up with your program. So it's not just telling them to track steps and drink water. Then you have a follow-up with an automated nurture sequence, down cells, and all of that stuff. And this is how it all fits together. The real benefit of having this in place is that once you've recorded it, it's there, it's automated. You, you get rid of that guilt of, oh, I haven't posted on Instagram yet today. All that guilt goes away because your marketing is working 24 seven for you. Here's some examples of coaches putting this into place. This is Perry. She built out her 14 day sequence, has moved into online coaching from a different industry entirely. She was able to leave her nine to five and now does this full time. Rob was also working full time. He managed to build out this sequence in his weekends and evenings, converting 17% of his leads into customers. And that's because he focused on spending his time building the right stuff. Nick, I think Nick holds the record. He managed 26% conversion with his first run of the 14 day sequence and now he's scaling things further with ads. We fell into the one-to-one -one coaching trap several years ago and it took ages to try and unpick the mess that we'd made. It's effectively swapping time for money and it means that when you're at 30 clients, which dominates your week in terms of time, if you were to sign up another client, then that client necessarily gets the worst service because they're now number 31 in the queue. So they have to wait for you to respond to all 30 other clients before you get back to them. Doing things like Zoom classes is a stopgap. It's not really a long-term business, but it doesn't, it doesn't really help in terms of exchanging time for money. The other problem with one-to-one -one coaching, as I mentioned, the negative flywheel is that the revenue curve is linear. So if you want to take on another client, you've got to exchange another hour of your time. And so you have to sleep less or spend less time with family. So how do you get out of this trap? Remember, the CEO of Starbucks isn't making every cappuccino. Ronald isn't making every milkshake. The colonel isn't molding every chicken nugget. And the king isn't making every burger. So you've got to consider the flywheel in this. And now we are at the point where we get fitness testimonials from super happy customers that we have had no personal contact with. Sometimes we don't even know who they are. And it's a bit surreal because the system did the coaching and they're perfectly happy. They're staying for months and months. And that's where the results are being delivered by the recipe that we made years prior. It took us a while to get over that, but actually like if you go to Starbucks and it's not the CEO that made you a cappuccino, like it would be a cool experience if the CEO did, but you, you're not expecting that. It would be a bit strange if he was. You'd be like, why are you here? Have you not got important things to do at head office? So how does this all fit together? You start by building the 14 day sequence. You then get 20 to 50 leads in using free methods first so that it's low risk. You're validating the offer. You then sell tester spaces, beta program at 50% off. You then build the program with those testers so that you're making the ideal program for them. You then take the feedback from that, relaunch the 14 day challenge with ads and the whole system creates the flywheel. Also, what that means is that if you sell first, you can generate cash up front and you've got the validation of the offer definitely working rather than making the mistake we did of building up to this big launch and spending hours and hours building a program in a cave and then launching it and it completely flopped. So pre-selling a program is the best way to validate the offer. Next time round when we did that, it worked so much better because we were building exactly what people wanted. You can then reinvest that cash into scaling. What you don't want to do is the tumbleweed effect. So how did the sell and build model work? Charlotte got 13 clients before even launching. She knew that it was validated and then she was able to scale things up and above and beyond. Bobby and Ryan increased the quality of their services while getting more clients using this method. Beck went from one-to-one -one coaching to evergreen group coaching. She was able to step away from trying to market by doing swipe ups and DMs. She also smashed it with her 14 day sequence. So you've sold the tester spaces. The next step is how do you scale things above and beyond? You can't scale by hoping that the same people who are liking your stuff on social media are eventually going to buy. 
you're going to exhaust that audience pretty quickly, even if you've got 10,000 followers. Word of mouth is not a fast enough vector to grow your service, even if it's a great service. So we recommend ads. And you can see here that the pool of potential people that you can access with your Instagram following is, let's say, your mum and your mum's friends. And once you've posted to the 2% of people who are going to buy from your audience, you're just posting to the same people and you're not going to convince any more of them to buy. With ads, you've got an infinitely refreshing group of people that you can target the keywords to. Some people we speak to are like, oh, I tried ads and it didn't work. Usually what they mean by that is they pressed boost post on a post that already wasn't generating any sales. I'm sorry, but like, what were you expecting? Ads don't do anything magical. They just get attention and clicks. And so they just are an amplifier of what's already happening. So if you've got a post that isn't converting organically, throwing a hundred thousand pounds of ad spend behind it isn't going to do anything. So we want to be using ads in a very targeted way. And here's how they would work. So let's say first paid run of your challenge, you're running ads and you're getting one pound 50 per click with a thousand pound budget. That sends 333 leads to your landing page, converting at 50%, which then generates 13 program sales if you're 14 day funnel converts at 4%. These are all kind of the typical target numbers that you can aim for. They then roll into recurring clients at 75%, paying 873 pound per month in total. So you can see that the profit from this whole system works out at 1,300 pounds. Let's say you reinvest those profits into round two. Same numbers, one pound 50 per click, landing page at 50%, You've got 780 leads, some of which will join your email list and maybe buy in six months time as well. So remember that effect. So that's generated 31 sales at 4,500 pounds, three quarters of which roll into recurring monthly at 3,100 per month. So now you've got 6,600 pounds profit plus the recurring monthly profits from the clients that stay with you. So even more examples, TJ applied this, he generated 14 new clients and 1,200 pound of monthly recurring revenue. Bodhi generated $4,000 in two weeks applying this method. Colin built an online offer to support his offline niche, converted 83% of his leads into applications and 50% of them into sales for his hybrid offer. Carl, Carl is a wizard. He generated $5,840 from a $174 ad spend. And critically, he was able to sell swimming coaching while the pools were closed. So you had people doing like technique drills in their room while the pools were closed. Absolute legend, very impressive, but his funnel is stabilized at converting at 10%, highly profitable. So what do you do now? Well, we can potentially help, but we don't have a magic wand. We can simply navigate you through the process to get you to this state. And you will get there on, on your own if you watch this video again and implement the model. But the reason that we feel that we can help is that this is just a blueprint that we wish existed when we started out because it would have saved us years of headache and it's categorically cheaper to follow a blueprint in once you account for the opportunity cost and the wasted time and the wasted ad spend. We've spent over half a million pounds in ads over the last few years and a lot of it could have been optimized a lot better if we knew what we were doing from the outset. So I want to offer you a slot to have a chat with us and get this system up and running in your business at the time of recording this, we have slots available. If that changes, I'll put a link in the description to find out more. To set your mind at ease, we've been on our fair share of high pressure manipulative sales calls in the past, and it's absolutely not that. It's really just to see if it's something that we can or can't help you with. Uh, we're also not trying to maximize sales for the business program because we have got a lot on our plate. And so it does mean that if we don't think we'll be able to help you, or if we don't think you're a good fit, please don't be offended if we tell you straight up. Um, as long as you have the expertise and if you've got some proof of concept in this, then we can possibly help you. So book in a call below. Also comment on the video with the word blueprint if you want the summary of all of this. All right, looking forward to speaking to you and chat to you soon.